All right, what up guys? So I just passed my CompTIA A plus certification in about 20 days and I'm not making this video to flex, but I was just gonna go over how I studied, what was on the test and what I think you should practice with. Before taking this test, it was very difficult to find dense information about the newest version, uh, which was this number right here. I'm not gonna keep saying it but I wanted to make this video because for me it was very difficult. Uh, I just wanted to share my experience. So here's my credentials. Obviously my name isn't Kibu, but I just changed it right here for privacy concerns. And let's go to the overview. So this is what they give you when you finish and it's a pass or fail. Core two, I took on the 20th. Here is the areas I need to improve on. For core one, I took on the 21st and I passed and here are the areas I need to improve on. I started studying on September first and this was when I was able to take off work and rent an Airbnb. I wasn't going to start studying until I knew I was able to be able to take off work. I took both tests back to back 20th and the 21st and I passed with a mid 700s. Sorry guys I'm trying to make this video very fast because I got other stuff to do so if I'm not speaking too well uh, that's why. All right so I studied for about two weeks. I already have previous programming experience with uh, React, Next, obviously HTML and CSS. I am comfortable running uh, basic commands on terminal, not PowerShell, so like list, CD, uh, remove, stuff like that. I already have previous experience using Linux, uh, mostly Kali Linux, but I do not have, I pretty much have like no experience using Windows 10 or 11. And the last Windows computer I owned was running Vista and I pretty much been a Mac user. So if you're going to this with Windows experience and zero Mac or Linux experience, I think you will be okay. Now here's my most helpful advice. So what is your motivation to pass these tests? And my current motivation is I hate my job. I work with children and it's very tiring. Other helpful advice, I watched pretty much only Professor Messer's videos on YouTube and I bought Jason Dion's test. Uh, Dylan, Dion, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry, man. Udemy core one and two is like about $10. I highly recommend buying both of these because this will help you practice. And I believe these are the only two things that you should use to practice. All right, knowing I would be taking the Network Plus certification soon, so I knew this knowledge was low level. In the future, this knowledge I'm going to have to retain for the Network Plus. Uh, obviously, spend time studying, so I'd wake up, start studying, go to work, come back home, continue studying. And this is what I think was the most important thing was stamina, because you have 90 questions and it's very much critical thinking. So it's pretty much trying to practice using your muscle memory. So I'd study using uh, Dion's practice test and I'd finish core one and two and I finished the first test all six of them three times and then I would just re-practice the test for stamina so I would try to practice as much as possible just read the question understand it and then choose the answers uh, this was very very this is probably the most helpful thing pretty much I was to the point where I could practice a test in the morning review the answers practice the test at lunch review the answers practice the test at dinner and review the answers. So I could practice three tests a day and this really helped improve my stamina and improve my muscle memory. All right, so preparing for the test. So the day before, I walked to the testing center to check the distance. So it gave me an estimate time of when I needed to leave the house. And then I crammed all of Professor Messler's videos on two times speed the day before. And for the core two, which I took first, I was able to review all of Dylan's Dion's core two practice tests before the test and I built up so much stamina that I was able to review all six practice tests before going in to my exam. And then for the core one, since I was taking it the next day, I had about 12 hours to study. Uh, there was a sleep break in there and I crammed Professor Mess's videos core one on two times. I'd skip the parts that I didn't know and then I would study with Dion's core one test and I was pretty much practicing Dion's core one test all the way up to the time I needed to practice my core one exam. And then I put some monster in a empty clear plastic water bottle. So I do recommend you bring something to drink if it's allowed at your testing center. Mine was quite hot and I'm glad I brought something to drink cause my throat and it just gives you like kind of a mental break just to like sip something and just calm your nerves. So the test, so on the test, I would say that Professor Messer's material covered only about 40% and Dion's practice test only covered about 20%. I was also quite surprised when 
I took this test. So the other percentage was pretty much just critical thinking using a scenario. So they'll give you a scenario and you obviously have to use critical thinking to solve the answer. My advice is flag the performance-based questions and immediately move on. So originally when I was taking the test, I thought I had more time than I did, but by the time I was finished, I didn't estimate how long answering the questions and the stress would take. So in my opinion, if you don't know the answer, if you just read it one time and you don't know the answer, just flag it and move on. And then at the end, you'll be able to review all of your questions that you didn't know. So obviously some of the questions I didn't know. So I had to use process of elimination, A, B, C, and D. Obviously it can be like D, C, A, N. And the other times I would come back and reread the question and then I'd understand the correct answer. Pretty much uh, after I knew that I answered most of the questions, I could come back to the question and have a little less stress reading the question. And I believe this is why I was able to like understand it a little better and solve the answer from there. So the core one and core two, I flagged about 50% of my questions on the first round. And then on the next round, only about 40 questions were flagged and the next round 30 and 20 and so on till I finished. And I'm gonna go over the performance-based questions that I encountered. So for core two, I was asked to set up a library Wi-Fi router or I don't know if it was a Wi-Fi library or is it a home I can't remember but I had to rename the Wi-Fi library to library or home I enabled channel 11 so it doesn't interfere with with other Wi-Fi channels the lady wanted a certain Mac address with only two devices so you have to turn on Mac filtering and you copy and paste the Mac addresses that she wants for the second question you, you were given this screen with uh, like an instant messenger chat and on the chat there's a CEO complaining that he can't access his like mail or messages and then you're given a response so you click the response it'll pop up a window and you get maybe about four questions or if like four responses that you can choose from uh, within this messaging app. And so you select a response. So the first one you ask a question, which was like, did anything change or has anything changed within your computer? And the CEO will answer that like there was a computer update and then you're given something to tell them to change the port. So I, I think I chose port 25, which I know is wrong because port 25, the simple mail protocol, it only sends mail out. And I think it should have been 110, the pop three, which will keep the mail on the server. And then you can reread it. I don't know if it was pop three or IMAP. Yeah, if you know, just let me in the comments below, but I believe I put 25, which was an incorrect answer. I believe they give you 25, 58, and pop 10, and like the IMAP. And then number three, I can't remember. So if I remember in the comments later, I'll post it. For the core one, so there was, the number one was, there was a printer causing problems when trying to print large prints and the toner was like smearing or something was wrong with ink. Yeah, it was a laser. So I think they use uh, the word uh, toner and you have to select the tray and you have to select the fuser. And part of this question was you, you're only supposed to provide answers to the problem. So there's actually, they actually give you like four answers to provide, but you only provide two answers uh, because these are the only correct answers to solve this problem. And this was a little confusing until I reread it. So large prints was the tray and then toner smear smearing was the fuser because it wasn't getting hot enough. But then it gave me like two more and I was like, this doesn't make any sense because like these both answer it. And then I reread the question and it asked you to only provide the answers to the problem. So I left the other two blank. Continuing on to number two, they ask you to set up a gaming PC and a home PC. So the requirements for the gaming PC was to make it as fast as possible. They don't care how much money it is. And the requirements for the home PC was make it for video calls and as cheap as possible. I think if anyone studied, uh, you're just gonna have to like figure this out. And then for number three, a customer complains about the PC turning off after a few minutes. And so you have to problem solve. So originally I thought this was a overheating issue. And then you're given specs about each component. So they have like a water cooler, a CPU, RAM, the motherboard and the BIOS. And you can select and it'll give you some specs on each component. And then at the bottom of the window, you're given uh, two selections. So the first selection you select and it'll give you maybe about like 12 selections on what you need to fix. So like update the BIOS, change the motherboard, problems with like change the CPU. And this is just sol solving the problem. So I think I chose update the BIOS because the problem was that the BIOS temperature, so the BIOS temperature 
was much higher than the CPU temperature. And so I believe that was causing the problem because it wasn't a power supply problem. Don't know if this was correct. Uh, they gave you like 12 and I was stressed and I was in a rush. And so then the second one was what kind of issue is it? And I believe I select like, it's like overheating, components problem. And those are like the two ones I was like battling back and forth with. So I think it was, I chose overheating. I was a little confused with the answer that they're they giving me. So that's that. I was not asked any questions on the cat cables. So the speeds, uh, the cat category six, category five, category E, five E, stuff like that. And nothing about post beeps. Uh, I remembered them, but uh, you don't have to remember them. And the speeds I was kind of worried about with the cat cables, but they weren't asked anything. I was only asked about one or two questions about command lines uh, because I already knew them. I don't really remember thinking too much about them. So I can only remember one or two that were asked. I was only asked only a couple questions about Mac or Linux computers. It was mostly about Windows computers. And as you can see here, my areas I need to prove in is pretty much all windows. Sorry guys if I uh, was studying on my words and like I was just trying to make this video as fast as possible and I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. But uh, yeah, I just made this video because when I was trying to take my test, I couldn't find very good dense information about it. So I hope this helped you out and uh, yeah.